All right, so let's make a formal introduction for our listener. Uh, good afternoon, Robert. My name is Claudio. I'm calling you from Washington, D.C. Uh, from the studio of Fairfax City, we're very humble and grateful that Robert Dean accepted our invitation to our show. Robert, welcome to the show, man. My pleasure. Robert, with, everything, with all the stuff that is going on in the world with COVID and some people here in, in, in America, they believe in the vaccine, some people do not, some people die, and some people live in denial. You know, obviously it's affecting everybody's life. And how is that affecting your your life, your family life? You know, now you cannot uh, tour, you cannot go out and match houses. It, so far, it hasn't really affected me very much at all. You know, I'm vaccinated, um, but I live a relatively quiet life. You know, I mean, what what I what I'm not able to do so much is is move around as much as I used to, but. Um, but I mean, around the place I live, I just do exactly the same, you know, it's like go to the shops, go bird watching, take my dog for a walk, you know, um, see friends, not so much as I used to, but you know, um, it's it's pretty much the same, really. Gotcha. It's the quiet life, you know, I live. I live a very peaceful life, mostly. <laughs> That's good though, yeah. compared to compared to what we you what you used to do for a living yeah yeah, yeah. 50 years ago man <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely so, different. do you have like a, a studio at home where you do recording on you um i have a home studio home but studio, yeah. I, when i'm recording like properly i like to go into a proper recording studio with engineers and, and you know um i think it's important to uh to use proper proper studio sure. facilities you know, to get the best that you can out of what you're doing. You know, I, that's what I was used to years and years ago, and I still want it. I, you know, I, I always feel limited by, by home studio stuff, even though it's, you know, it's so, so much better than it used to be. Um, but for me, I, I still prefer, like, you know, that extra step. Yeah, you can do kind of, uh, and you know, a big space where you can have live drums and, and yeah, you know, live drums, yeah, guitar and, and you can crank up the volume and you know, like a proper studio, like a proper studio. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Were you born like in a in a musical family? When how um, were you, you? You began playing, taking I don't know, piano lesson or guitar lesson at the time. Oh, uh, my sister had piano lessons, but um, but I never did, but. I was actually better at the piano than she was. Really? <laughs> even, so, even though she was the one having the lessons. I, I wasn't having the lessons, but I was kind of just by sitting and playing at the piano, I was doing better than she was. Wow. Yeah, but I never got piano lessons. Uh, what, uh, what about guitar lessons? No. Really? No. You learn on your own? Yeah. My God, man. I, fig I figure, you know, I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do it, so... Yeah, it's not that hard. <laughs> Good for you. Well, you know, some people may say, well, you know, dedication is the important thing. The important thing. Is I, co I, I completely, I completely agree with you, Rob. But yeah. you need, yeah. you need to have talent. Too. I mean, dedication. Well, I, I, I think talent. you can, you can. Well, if you have the dedication, you have the talent. You know, it's, they go, they go hand in hand, really. Yeah. I mean, I don't think anybody who's meant to be a musician would be one if they didn't have the dedication to stick to it. I don't know, you know, that's, that's, no, that's what I think. I understand. So like I told you before, right? Uh, for me, uh, I don't play any instrument. No. I don't know how to read music, nothing. But I began listening to music uh, when I was probably a baby. My dad in yeah. Chile had a uh, a lot of music, jazz and tango from Argentina. Uh -huh. So I began listening to music when I was a baby. And then around 14, year, when I was 14 years old, I just go rock and roll, you know, Genesis, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, and the rest is history. Man. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I have an older sister. Yeah. And so she was, she was old enough to be into like, you know, the Beatles and, you know, when yeah. they started and, and but her favorite band was the Beach Boys. Beach Boys, and, yeah. and she also loved Motown and, and yeah. soul music. So I, I I got a lot from her 
in in that respect. But as far as uh, my own taste, that came later, you know, I, I branched out on my own really, you know, and just, well, you know, you get it from school, you know, from kids at school, you'll, you all suddenly start discovering things. And in, in the um, mid to late sixties, I mean, there was so much to discover, you know. Oh, I mean, absolutely. It was an amazing time to, to be a, a, a school kid, I think, for music anyway. I got you. I understand. Yeah. Were you, before you joined uh, Japan, were you like in a band in high school? Um, I, I was seven? trying. I was trying to be in bands. I, you know, I mean, I, I, we had a little band at school and then I decided that I wanted to be a guitarist. So I, so I concentrated on it very hard. And uh, I played with a couple of bands, but we never actually like, played a gig you know I mean <laughs> we never got that far you know but I knew that it was what I wanted to do by that point and so I just stuck at it you know and I and I you know I took a job so that um so that I could buy the the instruments I needed to make it work for me yeah where were you uh did you uh did you um I mean, were your parents supportive? You needed to convince yes, them that, they were always that well, one side, college, university, and I can be a musician. It was a difficult conversation for, for you to no, have with them or not? It really or wasn't. No, it really wasn't. They were very supportive of me. They let me do whatever I want, really. Yeah. So I didn't go to university. Yeah. I just, you know, left school at 18 after um, A-levels, they call it in England. A-level, yeah. And uh, just went straight into a job, you know. Yeah. In 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 an office. <laughs> That's what I did. Right. And then, how old were you when you ended up uh, joining the band? You, did you you need to go for an audition, or how was how was the process? Yes. Yes. There, there was a, there was there was a, a music paper called Melody Maker in those days. Yeah. That was like the main the main music paper, weekly paper. And uh, they had ads for bands all the time, you know, in the back of it. And uh, I answered an ad for, for Japan. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, they weren't anybody. I, I don't think even the name was on the uh, ad, you know. It was just guitarist into Roxy Music, I think, and Bowie and Mark Bolan. And I think that's what it said in the ad, something like My that. My God, man. It would be great to see the ad somewhere. you got to be somewhere. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I haven't got <laughs> it, but I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if one of the band has it actually somewhere in a Somewhere, somewhere. in the basement or something. Above. Yeah, but, but not me. I don't have any of that stuff. But uh, yeah, so I just answered an ad and I was the, I was the first one auditioning for the, for the band. Yeah. And... and they just didn't bother to look for anybody else. <laughs> well, so at the yeah. time, yeah, so David and his brother, yeah, then my current, with um, unfortunately, he's not longer with us, mm -hmm. got together. They were in the same high school, right? And then Richard Barbieri came later, right? That's, is that correct? Uh, he, was, he was from the same school, too. Um, oh, the same school. But he wasn't officially part of the band when I joined, I don't think. Yeah, I think the, he, he came of, after that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think he was sort of like on the on the edge of being in the band. Yeah. I, you know, um, it was very early days. You know, I mean, it was basically just friends playing together. And then, you know, I joined. I, it was actually a long way for me to go because I lived in North London and they lived in South London, which was quite a way away from each other. But um, we managed to make it work. And I was impressed because they actually had a PA system, which, you know, that was the first band that I played with but who actually had got it together to have their own PA system. So I was very impressed. <laughs> yeah. well, you, you, you remember, you remember the, how it was like, uh, I don't know, the first, the first gig that you guys got together? Or yeah, we, we, we did a... a uh, show at a, a local uh, uh, college, a local yep. college close to where they lived, and we were the support band to a band called the Fabulous Poodles. Yep. And um, I remember that we 
didn't have very much space on the, on the stage. And at one point, while we were playing, I think it was, Steve's drums fell off. <laughs> His drums fell off. The stage. Oh, God, man. It was, it was chaotic, but, you know, it was fun because it was our first gig. So, yeah, sure. you know, I mean, we managed to have a good time anyway. I, at that point, everything, you know, playing music was, was everything. And so you enjoyed it anyway, no matter what pitfalls you make. You make but yeah. I, I, I imagine that at those days, all of you have regular jobs, right? Because you were making yeah. any money out of music. Well, actually, Dave, Dave, David and Nick and I think Steve was still at school, I think. Oh, you were a couple of years older than them, right? That they just yeah. Steve was still at school. Dave and Mick had left school, but they weren't working. They were they were um, they were oh. getting dull. They were yeah. on the doll, you know. Yeah. And Richard was working. He was working in a bank. Um, yeah. I can, I cannot I can I cannot picture Richard Barbieri <laughs> working in a bank, man. He's yeah. kind of <laughs> you got to start somewhere. <laughs> well, everybody, yeah, everybody starts somewhere, man. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I, w I was, of course, I would begin listening to music, Emma. And um, you guys were, you know, you signed for a record label and you were not doing at least the first two albums, right? Um, with uh, Adolescent Sex and Obscure Alternative and Life in Tokyo. It was, it, you guys were not doing that great, right? They didn't have any, any major in, hits at all, right? Not in England and Europe, no. But, no. but, um, But miraculously, it was like it was picking up in Japan. In Japan, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, we went to Japan for the first time in 79, I think. Yeah. Uh, early 79, like January of 79. And, you know, I mean, back, back home, we were playing the Marquee Club in London. And, and in Japan, we sold out two nights at the Budokan, which was. Oh, my God, man. <laughs> which all the big bands played it, <laughs> you know, so it was quite unreal. And, you know, we had screaming girls everywhere and, and, and we had to leave, leave the hotel by special secret entrances. <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy, but, but it was, um, it was good for us because it, it kept us going. Of you know, course. Yeah. Just, just the, 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 um, The profile in Japan was enough to keep us going, struggling however we were, you know, in, in like England and Europe. Europe was picking up. Europe wasn't doing so bad. You know, we, we were getting something of a reputation in Holland and Germany and uh, Belgium, yeah. and, you know. But, um, but England was tough. But it was also tough because, you know, we were... We were a band at the same time as, as the Sex Pistols and the Damned, you know, and that, that everything was changing in, in, in England, especially in London, and we weren't really fitting into that at that point. You were you know. competing with so many different great bands as well that it was yes, hard to make the a... Live, the live scene was incredibly vibrant. I mean, there was so much that you could go and see You know, like every pub had had bands on in those days, um, but it was it was a different type of band to what we were. We were sort of we weren't a punk band, we weren't a new wave band. We were something of a throwback, really. Um, you know, I mean, we were a rock band, really, with a bit of funk in it, um, and we were trying to be experimental, but but we were learning as we were going on. You know, and um, yeah, so it was almost like we started at the wrong time. <laughs> yeah, but not for Japan, not for the country. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. I, I read that you guys did very, very well, like three back-to-back -back shows or something like that. You did very well, so they give you enough money to keep keep going for another six months or whatever. Because we were able they, to survive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the record company, um, they, they financed us to a certain degree, but they could only do so much. Right. You know? yeah. um, they could buy us onto tours, like, you know, 
something's wrong with my screen. Yeah, the, the camera, I think you have like a lighting coming. The, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah. The light's changing. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, the, the, the regular label could support you that much, right? And then after that, they need to let you go, right? Yeah, and then you have to live from day to day, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's not cheap living in London. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Then, you know, you know, yeah. Then, but, then and now, London is very, very expensive to live. People are like, crazy. Yeah. I've been there many times and it's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, people think that living in New York is crazy. Well, go to London, my friend. Yeah. You know, it's, it's it's crazy the rent. So many people don't live there, right? They take the train in the morning, right? They That's live right. outside. Yeah. They work in the city, but they live somewhere else. Yeah, most of my friends, most of the people I knew in yeah. London now don't live in London. Yeah. They live outside. Yeah. Yeah. And then you were with Japan for the other three albums, right? The Quiet Life, mm -hmm. I Secondary Emotion, and then Gentleman Take Polaroids, right? And then yeah. toward, toward the end, right, toward the end of the period before you end up leaving the band, they began growing popularity in the in yeah. UK, some, some top 40s, I think, or... Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I left at the wrong time, but, you know, that's the way it goes. <laughs> you, you don't mind if I ask you what, what happened? What did you decide um, to leave? Or? It was just... Oh, a combination uh, of different things. Right? Yeah, you know, I mean... The, the, it was getting harder and uh, it was getting more electronic and it was getting harder and harder for me to find parts that worked with the songs that I was happy with, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just moving in a direction that wasn't really comfortable for all of us, I suppose. You, want, you wanted to, I think, uh, you want to have more kind of solo part and more guitar, and they were going more well, into I, electronic I, I, I keyboards. I certainly didn't want to be dictated as to what I did. Gotcha. You know, I wanted to have my own, my own freedom to create what I wanted. And I did up until that point, but I realized it was going to get harder. And yeah, so, you know, it was time to move on anyway, you know. And, and then when you, after you left, is that the, the time that Richard joined the band, kind of full time or no? No, or no, no. Richard, Richard was was in the band almost from the start. Okay, yeah. But but, um, but not when I auditioned. Okay, okay. So later on, right? Yeah. But he joined pretty much straight after, really. Um, yeah. So he's been in the band as almost as long as I have, or maybe he has been as long. But he 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 wasn't. Uh, he wasn't there when I, when I, uh, you know, when I auditioned and when we originally talked about it. Or he wasn't there. But yeah, I have, um, I have a great admiration for David Sylvian, of course. And mm -hmm. but he wasn't that. He was singing at the time, but I don't know if could, somebody could have anticipated that he will go. Japan will banish, and then he launch his solo career, well, playing with his brother in drums and stuff like that. Like, I think any, any, um, any, any singer with a, with a, with a strong profile is, is bound to go into some sort of like solo career. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the path it takes, well, who knows, you know, um, but I mean, for, for him, he, he didn't want to go the particular a particularly commercial path, you know, which I admire him for that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, right. So on one side, right, you go commercial and versus not going commercial and then yeah. gamble, gamble in a way, go solo with playing his brother, playing drums and, and then, you know, take a, take a, take a gamble and, and then see how it goes. But he, it well, works think, out well for him, you know. I think he, I think he, um, he did it all from his head and heart, you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he really thought about um, the situation. He just went for it, you know. And and as his career furthered on, it got a bit more esoteric and, and experimental. Yeah. And, um, you know, I mean, a lot, a lot of the music I listen to now is very experimental. Um, 
so I can admire him for that. Yeah. I know he's, uh, David, I know he's kind of quiet and he's not, of course, after he decided, I don't know if it's true or not, but no tour anymore. And he keeps like a low profile. And, Very low profile, yeah. yeah I, don't, I need to respect that. I, I reach out to, well, his website a couple of times and of course, no, no response, you know. Yeah. Maybe one day I will have the opportunity to have all of you. On, on, on one. I, I don't know about that. That would that, that, be hard. That would be really But you, you're not in touch with those people anymore? No, you uh, don't get, I'm, in don't? I'm in touch with Richard, yes. Richard uh, Bavir, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, we don't speak all the time or anything. But send emails or whatever. But, you know, I mean, it's like, yes, we're, we're in touch, but I, I don't necessarily feel that we have to be. I mean, it's so long ago. I mean, I've been living in Costa Rica for 30 years for a start, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know too many people from 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Any, you know. And also, you know, sometimes for any, if, even if it was five years ago, right? You mm -hmm. know, uh, sometimes some bands, when they've played out, they, they hate one another or whatever, they go a different way. And, you know, yeah. They never yeah. Saw, like, like, a, like a divorce <laughs> or yeah. a, a marriage, you know, you don't want to... It absolutely is. I mean, I mean, yeah. for the time you're in a band, you're in each other's pockets for you know, twenty four seven. You know, it's crazy. And that gets tough after a while. Yeah, I can totally understand why bands split up. Yeah, yeah. It's it's way too intense after yeah, a while. Yeah, exactly. That intense yeah. is the right word. So, yeah. me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan, right? I'm a, sure. I'm, you know, I'm a consumer of your music, right? So. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, you get you know why Les Zeppelin break up or why Pink Floyd Les Zeppelin broke up or whatever. Right. You know, when when you've been with someone for you know five years or whatever, you know they and they now touring here, same hotel, the same life. Man, you just start people start pissing you off, you know. I mean, it's, what the heck? I, I well, want to yeah. do my own thing. They want it's me to do this type of music. I don't like the type of music. I want to do solos. Yeah. I want to, you know. And, it's like living with anybody, you know. The, your little idiosyncrasies that that person might have just yeah. they get worse and worse. You know, um, the interactions you have with them, you, things about them annoy you, and you know, and they get more annoying as time goes on. And you, you know, it's just I life, just, you know. It's rare you can find people that you can actually be with all the time, forever. Yeah. Yeah, everybody has got their own. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're saying, man. I, I mean, you know, this, you know, one thing working like in a company where you go, you are there, whatever, eight to four or nine to five, and then you go home and you don't need to see your boss anymore. Or, or, yeah. or the next, but in a band, you guys are day in and day out, touring together, traveling together, and, you know, it's, it's, co it, you know, it, yeah. it's, it's a complicated, yeah. And so after after leaving that, you end up, um, you know, feel free to, all my questions are kind of, um, obviously I want to get to know you as a person, but, you know, feel free to elaborate on the question. Most of the questions are open-ended. Uh, feel free to elaborate on your involvement with uh, Gary Newman in 81, 82. Are you okay? Yeah, I think you got frozen for a minute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, after leaving after leaving Japan, feel free to elaborate on the collaboration that you did with Gary Newman in eighty one, eighty two. Okay, well, what happened when I left Japan? Um, yeah. I I moved to Los Angeles. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, pretty soon after, um, I you know I met on the on the brief times that that we'd worked in, in the US, I, you know, I befriended uh, some people. And so um, they had a band called Viva Beat. And so I, I moved over to LA and started working with them. They didn't have a record deal, but it was just, you know, just working together on, on stuff and playing some gigs. And um, during that time, I, I, I bumped into Gary Newman. Um, we had, I should say that we, we had worked together briefly before that on the dance album. Um, Nick and I, you know, played on that. So I knew him vaguely. Also, 
um, he he came to Japan when we were on tour one time, but that's another story. But um, so I did know him, but not really very well. And anyway, so I bumped into him in Los Angeles and um, we said hello. And the first thing he said to me was, do you want to be in my band? Wow. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm, you know, he said, yeah, I'm going to go on tour and, and you know, I'm, I'm going to be rehearsing soon and I need a guitarist. And uh, I said, well, let's, you know, let's get together and talk about it. Sure. So he invited me to, to the place he was renting, the house he was renting in, in, in Hollywood. And, um, and we, we talked about what he wanted to do. And I, I agreed to do the tour. So um, we rehearsed quite solidly for about almost two months, I think. And that was myself and Pino Palladino and um, uh, Chris Slade, who's, who's been the drummer with uh, uh, Manfred Manzo's band. Well, I think he was doing stuff with ACDC at that point. Oh, the band The Firm, he was in that band The Firm with Jimmy Page. And, um, and Roger Mason, who was a keyboard player from uh, Australia, who Gary had worked with on a couple of albums, I think. So anyway, so that was the basis of the band. And then we rehearsed for, yeah, almost two months, I think. And then we did this tour of the States for, which was about a couple of months, I suppose. Um, going to a lot of places I'd never been, which was good, you know, got to see New Orleans and um, some places in Texas that I would never have seen otherwise. Um, it, it was interesting tour. It was, it was a strange tour in, in that, uh, he wasn't that big in the US really at that point. And so the places we were playing were kind of either too big for the audience he was getting or, uh, or they had to be uh, downsized, you know, like instead of playing a theater, we'd be playing a club and Stuff like that. How many people was it? Five hundred thousand? We go see. Uh, I think in in the big cities, you know, like San Francisco and Los Angeles and New York, we would play to a fairly large audience, uh, probably around a thousand or so. But then in other places, we would play to like five hundred. Oh, well. yeah. Did you ever have you been here in Washington D.C. or no? Have you? Oh, yes, yes. We played in Washington. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. Gary, Gary I can't, knew. I can't remember where we played, actually, in Washington. I can't remember. But, uh, yeah, we played in Washington. DC. Yeah, Gary, Gary Newman is going to be in town uh, September 20-something. I'm going to go and see him. Uh -huh. I, never, I never seen Gary Newman. And I have seen, you know, close to uh, over a thousand shows in my life. Yeah. Different yeah. bands, obviously. And... Um, and yeah, I'm going to be seeing him in a couple, I don't know, in mid-September, mid-20, in a club night 30. So I'm looking forward to it, right? Having a bit of a resurgence at the moment, so we'll probably get a pretty good crowd, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are, he, people are no, he's playing in a small club. It's, I think um, 1,500 or so. Well, it's not so loud yet, so yeah. It, oh, yeah. It, he's, he's popular in the United States, but not, not as much as in the UK or in Europe. No, no, yeah. Yeah. But I like you know, his music. Okay? One day I want to look back in my life, Robert, and I want to say, man, I saw every band, the best band in the world. So Every band, huh? Well, the top, the best one. I, for example, right, I never saw Japan. I never seen David Sylvian. Right. I never seen Les Zeppelin as a, you know, as Les Zeppelin. I have seen individual members, right? right? Pink Floyd, I never seen them completely. I really? never seen Pink Floyd. No, they, they split out, broke up, and. Yeah, I, uh, I, I saw all those bands in the centers. Good for you, man. I saw Led Zeppelin twice, The Who twice, um, you know, all of them really. With the good lineups, you know, Jeff Rotal, I bet. You know. Wow, good for yeah. you, man. Yeah. Pink Floyd, Queen. My God, man. Yeah, Queen. 
when of course I never saw them. Yeah, man, that's you know if I could go back in life and see all the stuff, I would I would die. G you know, Peter Gabriel with Genesis and everything. Of course, I see Peter Gabriel. I saw Peter but Gabriel. I can sell like Genesis, but I can sell about dog. Not together. I saw yeah. Gabriel with Genesis once. Yeah. yeah. And I've seen him solo, like every tour up until so. So was the last tour I saw. And I saw all the tours. Big, big Peter Gabriel fan. Um, Genesis is going to be touring here in the United States. Um, Oh, yeah, that's not the genesis I want to know about. <laughs> October and November. I'm seeing them like I'm seeing them like three times. Well, yeah, no, you know, I don't, I don't Phil, need to see that one. <laughs> you know, Phil Collins Core cannot play drum. His kid is playing drum. And yeah. Tony Tony Bank is there, Mike Rutherford, you know. But still I want to see him. Yeah. No, I'm I'm not a fan of Phil Collins as a singer. I think yeah. he's you know better behind the drums. Well, if you, if you change your mind, you have a place to to sleep here, man. Yeah. <laughs> so well, maybe some other time when somebody good is playing. <laughs> well, it's a lot of people coming this way, man. Yeah, I bet. I mean, they're all going to come now, aren't they? I mean, once, yeah, people, once they can, people, it's going to be a flood. Yeah, people people are September 1st. People are going crazy. They want to see yeah. live. They want to see shows. Huh? All the, all the uh, King Crimson are playing soon. You don't see them? Uh, of, of course, I'm seeing King Crimson twice. And I'm seeing them here in DC, uh, September 11, I think September 17, cool. and uh, and then two a week before I'm seeing them somewhere else. It's like a Saturday, four hours from here, so I will drive, right. see them live, and then drive back or something. Like that. Yeah. I like I, them. Man. I, I saw them at the Rolling Stones in Hyde Park in 1969, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. and and also I saw the uh, Discipline lineup. Um, when they were called Discipline, actually, they weren't called King Crimson yet. Yeah, when they first, you know, toured. Have you Have you ever met Robert Robert Fripp now? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah I, I, I I met him at a dinner party. A friend of mine had a dinner party. And yeah, he was invited. So yeah. Yeah. Well, if you if you if you change your mind, Rob, you always have a place to sleep here, man. Okay, thank you. I own a, a big house here. You know, you're gonna work. All right. All right. So after that, you after Gary Newman, you end up um, uh, joining uh, Sinead O'Connor and the the Lion and the Cobra LP, yeah. and you were yeah, a, a, a recording that, leader. So huh? Worked on that for about. Um, I worked with Sinead about eighteen months, I think. Um, for the first year. It was really just working on material. Um, and a record company, Ensign, was basically getting her ready, you know, to be an artist kind of thing. Because she, she was completely new at that point. I mean, she, you know, her experience was, was, was very limited to begin with. Um, but it was a great period for me. I, I loved working with her. She was she was absolutely wonderful, um, and um, very magnetic character. I mean, it, it was her her talent was just undeniable. Really, yeah. I mean, she was just great. I love I loved working with her, and um, yeah, doing the album was great too. Enjoyed that. Did you end up touring with, with her? As, or no. Not? Uh, okay. What happened was we recorded the album. Yeah. And uh, she became pregnant. And so it was agreed with her and the record company that she not release the album until after she had the baby. Okay. So um, this was a considerable amount of time. You know, this was like six to eight months, maybe more. You know, maybe ten months. I don't know. Um, and in during that time, I I, uh, I moved to Australia. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. What were you, do what were you doing started, there, man? I started my own band there. Well, I I, I was invited to do a tour with this band, um, and we worked. Uh, we toured for a, I know about five months, something like that. And during that time, I got, I got uh, interest in my, my songs. And... Uh